Hello, my name is Lowell Vanderpool, and this channel is dedicated to IT students, IT professionals, and anyone who enjoys learning technical subjects. These are SFP transceivers. This one has an RG40, it's an RG45, and this is really handy, especially if you're doing uplinks and, and the distance between a rack CPU unit and a rack storage, and they're only a very short distance because even at high speeds, 25 gigabits, you can, you can use unshielded twisted pair to connect short distances even at higher speeds. Once you get to 25 gigabytes or 10 gigabytes and you get beyond the length that is acceptable for twisted pair, you can't use these modules anymore. You're going to have to go fiber. Now these are SFP. Most modules that you're going to see are going to be the SFP or SFP plus. So this is very common type optical transceiver. This uses the LC connectors. So you would remove your dust boot and they just are going to slide in and lock in place. And that's how you're going to use those. These are very common LC connectors because of their size. These are the most common connectors for fiber optics. Now, these are being replaced with MPT and MPO type connectors, and we'll get into that later. You can see that side by side, they're basically the same length. So this would, the electrical contacts, they actually go to this point, and they're basically the same length. Now this has an extended portion because of the RG45 jack that has to go in here. And because of that, you can see they added extra springs. There's springs on the top, springs on the side. When this one goes in to the transceiver socket, it has a lot of friction. The top of the RG45 brings a latch down that allows you to grab this thing to pull it out because it's very difficult to get some of these out. The friction is quite good. Now this one is going to be much smaller, lighter one, and it does have the springs on the top, to produce the friction. It does not have the springs on the side. So this latch, which is just a wired latch, is fine for grabbing it and pulling it out. Because these units have an electrical contact, back here you have a printed circuit board and they make electrical contact. If these are in a dusty environment, you can pull these out and clean with 100% alcohol clean those fingers with a Q-tip and alcohol. And a lot of times, a lot of the irregular behavior with a transceiver will go away. Make sure your fiber optic lenses here are clean and make sure you clean your fiber optic connections on your cable also. So anytime you're in a dusty environment, make sure you clean both your fiber optic lenses and your fiber optic cables. They have special equipment to do that and you wanna make sure you clean those. Keeping your fiber optic dust boots on is very important for fiber optics. It really degrades the performance. And what happens is you create a lot of errors in your traffic flow, and then your error correction has to constantly fix that because you just got dirt and debris on your fiber optic. Let's take a look at my switch. This is an HP. It has a Ruba software on it, but it's just basically an HP workgroup switch. And it's got 24 ports of one gig unshielded twisted pair, RJ45. And then over here, it's got four ports that are optical. Those are SFP. The older jacks are gonna be SFP. Newer ones are gonna be SFP+. Now these optical jacks are all one gig. So the max, optical transceiver that I can put in here is an SFP one gig. Now that is not going to be an enterprise type optical jack. That's when you have the same speed on your optical port as you do on your wired port, it's only there for distance. So if I've got something beyond a cat five, cat six, cat seven limit, which is a hundred meters. In other words, I can only take this wire 100 meters. But if I have something that's further than that, say I've got way at the end of the building, I've got my router, 
and I need to bring that data back to this particular workgroup switch, I can use an optical port and go much further, 400 meters easily with optical fiber multi-mode. So these are typically for distance, not for uplinks, because you need at least 10 gig on this port to uplink it to another switch. You could put a router there because you can handle a one gig WAN port can handle 24 users all day long, but that's about it. So in my case, this is a work group switch and the optical ports are strictly for distance. Now, most enterprise, the optical ports are going to be for uplinks. You're going to have 10 gig, 100 gig, depending on your switch. Those in an enterprise environment, those fiber optic ports are not going to be for distance per se. They could be, but they're going to be for higher speed, 100 gig, 10 gig, whatever the situation. When you're putting in a transceiver, you want to put it in very gently, let it slide in and just gently press it in place. Don't get crazy because these are small electronic components and you just want to take care and make sure you're doing it gently. These are LC connectors with multi-mode. You can see my aqua cable, so that's multi-mode. And they just go in there and they click in place. Just make sure they're in there and you have a good connection. Once it's connected, I should see a link light come up. I'm glancing over here on the side and I can see that link light. Now this is my Microtech multifunction device. It's got a switch, router, firewall, wireless, and it has an SFP transceiver slot. And that's where I'm going from my HP to my Microtech. Now this doesn't have a link light that shows visible link connection, but we'll see in the software, as soon as I pop it in, it begins to transmit and receive right away. Let's take a look at Microtech. I am actually using the Winbox executable. It's a GUI interface to Microtech's operating system. And so I'm getting in, I'm actually using a username and password to access it. So here you can see I'm getting to my interfaces and there's my SFP interface on that switch. And you can see I'm transmitting and receiving already. And that is already I'm rocking and rolling. So if I double click this, I pull up the SFP interface and I can slide down and I can look in more detail at the ethernet characteristics and We'll, we'll see it's already working. So I'm just walking through the different elements of that SFP trans, transceiver in the software. And here you can see the rates I'm already transmitting. And over here on the timeline, you can see where I popped it in. And right away, my fiber optics is transmitting, receiving, just like that, just popped it in going. Now, obviously this is a default configuration. And if you want something different than the default, you're going to have to go in here and modify your configuration. But to get it started, to get it working, you just pop it in. And if that link light comes on, you're ready and rock Now and I'm in my HP Aruba software and I'm looking at my HP switch now. And I'm going to come down to interfaces and go to ports and notice my port 25 where my transceiver shows a check mark so I know it's good. If I click on that, look, I'm transmitting and receiving right there on that SFP optical transceiver. My graphical tells me it's up, the interface is up. I can look at my port 25 statistics and I am moving packets back and forth. I'm going to come down here and go to page three because I know that's where it's at. And you can see my status is up. It's enabled. It's 1000 SX, which simply means short wavelength interface for Ethernet, full duplex. And I'm connected. My neighbor is Massive, which is the host name of Microtech. We're good to These go. Transceivers. Now, let me blow your mind while we're discussing transceivers. Look at this picture. This picture, you see what looks like a SFP transceiver molded or bolted onto this massive black cable. And on the other end, looks like another SFP transceiver. These are not what they look like. These are actually copper cables. 
And what you're going to do a lot of times in one rack, you have your servers here. And just below it, you've got your storage. And they're only a foot, two foot, three foot away from each other. So they use DAC cables with those what looks like transceivers. And you pop in one end right into the transceiver socket, SFP. And you bring the other end down to the storage SFP socket. And you plug that other end in. And you connect electrical to electrical. No optics involved. What do you gain? Well, one of the biggest gains is lack of latency. You reduce the latency of translating electrical to optical. And then over at the other end, optical to electrical. Those transitions produce latency. And if you're looking for all the speed you can get, you go DAC cables. They got what looks like transceivers on the end, but they're actually electrical to electrical connections. And they can only go so far. They're very short, not very far. So there's two kinds of DAC cables. You've got passive or active. Active actually puts amplifiers in them. Passive means there's no amplification. These are used ex in areas where you're looking for extremely low latency and blistering speeds. This is often used from server to storage. When you go to our channel homepage, you can just become a member by simply joining because YouTube is simply giving less and less of our ad revenue to the content creators. That's the way they do it. There's nothing I can do about it, but they do give us the option of membership, which allows you to help us produce this material. Listen, if I produce content on how to create port tenderloin, I could get 50,000 views per video and we wouldn't have this conversation about becoming a member. That would generate plenty of ads, plenty of revenue. We wouldn't even have this conversation. But the content I produce is technical. You couldn't get five of your family members to sit down and watch five minutes of my video. They'd all die behind you. So this is content for IT professionals, IT enthusiasts, people that really like this type of material. And so the viewership is going to be low. Become a member, $2.99 a month. Google takes 30% of that also, but we need your help. Become a member, support the channel. It allows us to continue to produce good technical content. And if it doesn't benefit you, then I fully understand. But if you find that these videos help you understand technical content, I encourage you, become a member.